name is Tom Mang, and I'm a chemistry professor at Valdosta State. I'd like to tell you about my problem-solving approach to working with undergraduates to teaching. We focus on significant problems that face the world, and we use that method to learn. Um, we do projects where we don't know the answer. We try to take, come up with solutions that are green and economical, and when we're done, we try to hit peer review, meaning that if our work is good enough, it can be published in a journal, or it can be issued a United States patent. I should emphasize that we're working with undergraduates with limited resources and limited time. So we really have to rethink how we solve problems. Way back when I was in fifth grade, I did a science project on octopuses or octopi. Um, the problem was in New York City that there are no octopuses or octopi to be had in 1972. So I wrote to two marine labs in Florida and one in Italy, all three of them sent me back specimens. I hid pay dirt for a middle school kid doing a science project in the 1970s. That started my passion for the ocean, but it also showed me, gave me some lessons about collaboration and about owning your own idea and following through on it. Fast forward to 2019, and actually over the last five years, students and I have been working on developing a novel material that can be used in coral restoration. Right? It has to be green, and it has to be economical, and it has to work. Um, here you can see students working in a greenhouse with me where we make it, and then we have a permit from NOAA to do work in the Florida Keys. And there you can see one of the corals that we raised. Again. Um, we have applied the same mindset to oysters. Oysters are a keystone species along the shorelines. Um, they are responsible for habitat, and they also prevent shoreline, shoreline erosion. All the co-authors on this paper are undergraduates, and this study spanned over four or five years. We again, we developed a novel material to attract wild oyster larvae and have them grow at an accelerated rate on a material. Here you can see one of our mini oyster bars off the coast of Georgia. Braustat, it's one of the big drugs of our time and one of the most complex synthesis that you do it in a lab. The elite universities are doing lab-based high-tech uh, based synthesis, it still costs $15 million a year, 40 years after this molecule was first identified. You can see the technology that Matthew and Bethany are using. We've come up with a way where the symbiotic bacteria that lives inside that critter um, is grown in our buckets. We can then harvest it. Now there's a lot of specific things we have to get right. The location, the surface we grow the bacteria on, what we feed them, the time of year, what's on the bottom, etc. But that took us years to work out. But our green tech approach to making this molecule we think may be a precedent for other drugs that come out of the ocean. Antibiotic resistance, it's a big deal now. Tuberculosis is a, is a disease that's plagued mankind since the beginning of mankind. Currently, there are two billion people worldwide that are infected with TB. Our undergraduates have been working on a way to take an existing antibiotic that the medical profession is familiar with and it's very inexpensive, and to repackage it so it works again. Two students and I, Sydney and Tess, won a United States patent after four years of give and take with the patent office on our economical method of taking an existing antibiotic, repurposing it, and making it work again against drug-resistance antibiotic. We also published a number of papers that probably had a total of about 15 undergraduates as co-authors. Finally, let me tell you about our cancer drugs. We've had 20 novel cancer drugs that have entered preclinical trials at a national lab. This paper, like our other ones, has students that are co-authors. So rather than just studying about other people's cancer drugs, which we do, we also came up with our own. We are currently focused on uh, cervical cancer that's caused by HPV and is a growing problem in third world or developing countries. That's important because they cannot afford a lot of American medications. So taking an existing drug and making it work better is, is a solution. And again, the students have done this in our labs where we don't have a lot of technology, but we should emphasize that we do collaborate quite a bit with other labs that provide us with high-tech data. Thank you.